It's been a while. Sorry to keep you waiting. But it's finally time for me to finish this story. Welcome back to the adventures of Captain Drake. Space Pirate. Brace yourselves. It's gonna be a long one. Riddle me this. TG. What's the first thing you do after meeting up with an old friend reminisce about old times nope. Catch up mmmm. Erp nada. But I like the way you think. Anonymous. In my case. You get told off for a solid 30 minutes by a very angry storyteller. Now. Hindsight is 20 stroke 20. Even when you're wearing an eye patch. So hey. I get it. Maybe leaving was a little rash. Still. I fast forwarded through the obligatory apology as much as Hawk would allow. I had some pressing questions of my own, you see, and at least one of them couldn't wait. Where were the others? I prepared myself for the worst. Years had passed since we were united under that black flag, shitting up the galaxy, and friendships don't last forever. She hit me with the bad news first. Scarlet was gone, Ronin was Mir, and Faye was in limbo. Scarret vanished into the night not long after I did. The sneaky cunt. Nobody had heard from Ronin in a few years, which is a shame, because he was a pretty nice guy when he wasn't boring us to tears. Faye was still around, in the same sense that I still own a Sega Master System. Can't really remember what it looks like, and it's probably more dust than machine at this point. But it's here somewhere, and so was she, lurking silently in the forgotten corners of a contact list. Then came the good news. Zion, Archer and Hawk were still tight. Granted, Archer didn't show up too often since he'd mutated into a responsible human being, afflicted with some kind of voodoo curse he called a job. But Zion was exactly the same as she'd been before I left. I caught a mouthful from her too, but she can't convey the same kind of venomous disapproval that Hawk can. That, and she tends to talk like she's on 4chan even when she's not on 4chan, so being likened to an autistic Batman was as harsh as it got. As for Hawk, you're all familiar with her by now. Oh, and there was one new member of the group that I didn't recognize. Sybil. The name might be ringing some bells if you ever read Hawk's story. She joined the group a little while after I left, so a meek nice to meet you was all I got from her. It turns out my comeback was pretty well timed. Hawk had still been running a campaign for the remaining 3 players. Around 2 months ago, they'd endured a partial party wipe. Archer's character was the only survivor. Zan confessed to me that this had dampened her will to play a little bit. The way she told it, Hawk had become a pretty ruthless storyteller. Characters were dying off at an insane rate, and the group was beginning to run out of ideas for replacements, so the campaign was on ice. Now, my tabletop adventures were mostly behind me at this point. Reconnecting with a few old friends would have been enough to satisfy me, but hearing that I was starting to feel that old, familiar flame again, purpose, baby. These niggas got some serious problems. And I'm fancying myself a problem solver. But before I could start bathing in their collective gratitude, I had to reacquaint myself with how this shit worked. So I asked Hawk for a link to whichever forum they were playing on nowadays. Only took a glimpse at her condescending ellipses to realize the obvious. Those forums had went the way of the Brontosaurus a long time ago. So what was the alternative what were the cool kids using to play pretend nowadays you guessed it. Roll 20. Hawk invited me to the game just as soon as I finished making my account. Gave me the guided tour. Suddenly, all of Zion's complaints made complete sense. Hawk herself wasn't any more ruthless than she was before. It was the mechanics. The simplicity, read, absolutely fucking nothing, of the former system was no more, and in its place I found a complex network of appy scripting, macros and mechanical automation. I felt as though someone had kidnapped my homely wife and replaced her with a sexy cyborg. So, you know, at least a little bit conflicted. It took me a second, but soon enough, I knew exactly what I was looking at. I was looking at a video game. More specifically, I was looking at some kind of hybrid between Shador and Returns, Wasteland 2 and Fire Emblem, and that's exactly why the Grim Reaper had been so overworked recently. Games like Wasteland 2 might not feel particularly challenging or unfair when you're playing them, and there's a good reason for that. Load game. Most video games are designed from the ground up to accommodate an infinite number of retries. 
But there are no retries in tabletop gaming. Imagine playing a game like Shadow and Returns with enforced permadeath and no save system. Now imagine you're as attached to your computerized troll rigor as you are to your most beloved tabletop PCS. Small wonder the others were losing the will to go on. This character limit is some bullshit. Still, I couldn't just tell Hawk that her system was broken. Not because it would upset her, but because it would be coming from a position of ignorance. I hadn't even played it yet. After all, she dismissed it immediately. So I needed another solution. Video game ruler sets are static, they're unyielding, and most of all, they're automated. They don't warp into something more convenient just because you and the GM need them to. Same could probably be said for some published RPG systems, but it's a hell of a jump for a freeform group like ours used to be. So cheating the system was out of the question. What was left only one path remained open to me. I'd have to beat the game on its own turn. I asked Hawk to run me through character creation real quick. It started off simple enough. Even felt like our old system for a minute. You had your 7 base statistics. Body. Strength. Agility. Perception. Willpower. Charisma and luck. Then you had your skills. Pistols. Rifles. Shotguns. Explosives. Medicine. Hacking. Melee weapons. Unarmed. Dodge, you get the idea. And then you had your derived statistics. Action points, carry weight, base accuracy, base evade, base resistances, base critical chance, initiative, stability, range modifiers. Too many stats to keep track of, which made perfect sense, because the appy scripting took most of that out of our hands. If you press the attack macro and selected a target, your job was done, and so was Hawks. Ammunition and HP values adjusted themselves automatically, your chance to hit was calculated as a percentage instantly and compared against an automated D100 roll. And trust me, under any other circumstances, the thought of playing a tabletop game this fancy might have had me at full mast. But if the rumors were true, the balance on this thing was all out of whack, and the system was so dense and tightly woven that fixing it was gonna be tough, if it could be fixed at all without starting over from scratch. So I studied it. I studied the shit out of it. And soon enough I began to see something taking shape in the distance, beckoning me to its bosom. Hidden somewhere in that spider's web of variables was a build so overpowered, so broken that it could shake the very foundations of Roll20's shitty servers. And the best part it fit a certain mere space pirate to a fucking T. So much so that I couldn't resist putting in this faggy dart gif. Forgive me TG. Phase 1 was complete. I had my build prepared in advance. If Hawk's new system was a cunt, then this was a big black dick to leave it prolapsed. So now that I am become death, destroyer of worlds, it was time to set some things in the motion. Hey Hawk, do you wanna? Yes, and just like that, we were in a group room. Me, Hawk, Archer and Zion, just like old times. Oh, and Sybil. I have to concentrate really hard to remember that Sybil was there. Hawk makes the pitch. I understand that things have been getting a little stale. And I've been wondering if that may have something to do with the size of the group. That's my cue. So I thought I might be able to help with that. If I jump in, can we get this game running again Archer is in, no hesitation. Zion says she's up for it, but might need some time to come up with her next character concept. Sybil's a little apprehensive. Probably knowing that a bigger party might not be the solution to their problems. But she throws her chips in with us anyhow. 3 out of 3. Not bad. Can I join in too it's fucking fay. Didn't even see the stealthy bitch in the name list. But there she was. The others aren't as surprised to see her as Hawk and I are. They'd probably still been talking to her every now and then. But they are surprised that she wants to play. She hand wards it off as having been busy before now. Which worked for us. I think we were just happy she was back. And that was that. Great. I'll start preparing, then. Feel free to send me your new character sheets anytime. Faye's a little confused by this. New characters wait. I thought we were going to be playing as the old ones again. Sorry, no. The dead stay dead. In that moment, I think I understood the real reason why Faye stopped playing. The room was silent for a while after that. Meanwhile. In a private conversation with Hawk. I'm gonna play Drake again.
You okay with that? I think that goes without saying. Good. We're on the same wavelength. Drake has been out of commission for a long time. Though. I'll need to run a solo session to get both you and the character up to speed. A solo session. How works for me. I needed a warm up anyhow. I send over my sheet and she gives it a look. Your build seems a bit broken. Oh shit she caught on immediately. Uh, I'll give you a minute to redo character creation if you like. I don't think you'll survive long like this. Oh shit no she didn't. I play it off. Nah, I'm good with this. Feels like Drake's kind of play style, alright, if you say so. She doesn't give it a second glance. Infiltration successful. Let's get started, then. Wait, what? Uh, right now don't you need some time to think of scenarios and shit no. I've been planning this for a long time, and so my initiation trial began in earnest. Hawk set the stage with a lengthy introduction that she whipped up in record time. One week had passed since Drake escaped from the prison transport. His knee was on the men, but other than that, things were looking pretty dire. His friends were dead, and most of his equipment was still locked up in the back of that transport. Including his cape. You don't take a man's cape like that. God damn it. Worse, his ship was gone, and all his hard earned credits with it. You remember that ship from the finale of the original thread that wasn't the top tier cruiser that the party had been using in their glory days. That was his shitty starter ship, lovingly titled the fuck bucket. The kind of prime real estate that comes with a lifetime guarantee, perpetual foot stench, or your money back. Fitting more than one person in that thing would require a fucking acrobatics roll. And the foot bucket was just about the only thing Drake had left. Now, Drake had made more enemies than friends during his galactic misadventures. Most of them were pretty small time. They couldn't have retaliated against a guy so well armed and well protected. But Drake wasn't looking so well protected nowadays. He'd spent that week long time skip on the run from a bona fide rogues gallery of forgotten antagonists and mini bosses. Politicians, lawmen, thugs, cultists, cannibals, all of them wanted a piece. And no matter how many times he relocated, they were all eerily aware of his exact position. The introduction concludes with a short description of the abandoned manufacturing plant that Drake is presently holed up in. Along with the suggestive vibrating of his old PDA, one of the few bits of gear he managed to salvage during his escape. I whip it out. It's a message. The eye doesn't match any of Drake's contacts. They found you, S now. Mechanically speaking, Drake is a destroyer of worlds. With this build, I could probably stand my ground and put an abrupt end to this cat and mouse game. In fact, I spent my first few turns setting up some defenses in the factory, preparing to make my stand. And then I realized something. This is a test run. If I show my hand now, Hulk's going to know exactly what I've done. And there's no guarantee she won't just patch the engine to counteract it. That cannot be allowed to happen. Hawk is pretty bewildered when I abruptly jump out of the window after spending 10 in-game minutes making bear traps out of old, broken kitchen appliances. Oh, I was just, you know, cleaning up the place. She doesn't care enough to question it. But those 15 minutes cost me. I would have had 3 turns to get clear of the factory. Now I had 1. My movement speed does a lot to compensate for this. My build required a whopping 12 up to operate at maximum game fucking capacity. The average character had around half that much app, so I was out of there like a B-list superhero. Right as I'm bouncing my token across the map, Hulk pastes some shit in from the GM layer. I watch in horror as at least 20 bloodthirsty NPCs blink into existence before my eyes, dotted all across the map, blocking off different avenues of escape. And a group of three just so happens to be standing at the end of the alley I was sprinting down. Their leader rolls a damningly easy perception roll to spot me, then jabs his finger at me like I just submitted false evidence in a court of law. E. That's him pump him full A lead. Boys hey. Wait. I remember this Mathurfica. This is that portly Terran mob boss who blackmailed Ronin into doing his dirty work for a couple of sessions. Before we blew up his fancy mansion he was one of the most pathetic, low level enemies we ever encountered. And this fat fuck thinks he can take me down. Wait, shit, I can't fight back. 
It's my turn. The boss and his boys are getting ready to unload on me just as soon as Hawk lets them. And I can't return fire. So what do I do well? I'm in an alley. Right it's common knowledge that every alley has a conveniently placed manhole leading to the sewers. That shit is a universal constant. No perception check needed. Hulk lets me know that I'm standing right on top of it. Simple enough. I squat down and spend 4 app to pop that bad boy open. Okay. Roll strength. DC. 8 inches 8 pff. No problem. That's a babby roll by Hawk standards. I roll a 3. It is at this moment that I realize my strength stat is a whopping 2. And just like that, the crippling weakness of my cheesy ass build became clear. If I ever needed to roll strength, willpower or body, I would be fucked. I could spend my remaining 8 up to run back the way I came, but they'd get opportunity fire. Now, opportunity fire is inconsequential if you have a reasonable amount of HP, which you get from body. Which, in my case, was also too. I could wall jump out of the alley, Prince of Persia style. That's agility based, right agility or no, the roll would be so hard that my mods wouldn't matter. Fuck it, just try the manhole again I roll a 5. Try it again, I roll a 2. Again. Hawk stops me. Drake. You're out of app. Oh fuck. Enemy turn. Oh fuck oh fuck. Wait. This is fine another minor benefit to my build is a huge amount of evasion. They'll be lucky to hit me at all. Never mind kill me. I sit back and let Hawk do her thing. Each of the goons miss their attacks. Well, of course. Mob boss is up next. He hits. Hawk describes the superheated plasma searing the flesh on Drake's shoulder. Whatever, that's Finn. I had 90 HP. Now I'm on 40 why did I only put 2 in body? Why did you only put 2 in body? I don't fucking know. Holy shit. At this rate, I'm going to die. I'm going to die before I've accomplished a single thing. After everything he's been through, Drake is going to get shot down in an alley by some walrus looking mythurfica. No. The choice has been taken out of my hands. Holding back is no longer an option. It's time to unleash. The biggest. Blackest. Dick. My turn. Drake rises to his feet. Manhole be damned. Alright. You want me you got me. The starter handgun I selected was a model called the Nova. The Nova has less damage and much less accuracy than its sibling sidearms. But with a bonus property. Minus 1 AP cost to fire. And I've got 12 AP. Ignoring the attack macro, I use the aimed shot ability instead, increasing the app cost per shot by 1. I press it once, twice, thrice, thrice. And for each shot, I specify the head as my target. One for each goon, and two for the boss. No doubt Hawk was double checking the maths on that to make sure it checked out. Four attacks in one round is pretty insane unless you're a melee specialist. And even then you'd have to burn up to reach your target. And I was doing 4 aimed shots in one round. Suddenly I remembered why my body was 2. But okay. No big deal. I split those 4 shots between 3 targets. The individual damage would be inconsequential. Right hand guns have the lowest damage of all firearms. After all. The first shot misses. But the remaining 3 hit their mark. Goon number 2 and the boss die instantly. Hawk goes quiet. So, what just happened when I was learning the system, I noticed something that Hawk missed. If the scripting detected that an attack was going to be a critical hit, it would bypass the accuracy check entirely. In other words, if you were somehow able to get your critical chance higher than your chance to hit, your critical chance would become your chance to hit. But that's not all. You see, both critical hits and headshots multiply damage by 2, and in the formula, they stack multiplicatively. That's a guaranteed 4x damage on every attack. Now, what's the trade-off for using the Nova handgun? What's the trade-off for using the aimed shot ability and targeting the head? That's right. Big ol' chance to hit penalties. See where I'm going with this? My chance to hit on each of those shots was less than 20%. But my critical chance was over 60%. My average damage should have been around 25. Instead, I was dealing over 90 with every shot. So yeah, maybe my HP was a little low, maybe my accuracy could be better, maybe some of my base stats were pathetic, acceptable, fucking, losses.
This build was a carefully engineered abomination. And its sole directive was to fuck bitches. Hawk is typing, or oh shit. It felt damn good, but the cat's out of the bag now. Hawk's response finally comes in. Could've sworn she was typing for a good two minutes, but all she says is. Clever, she rolls willpower for the remaining goon to keep fighting. The DC is 19. He promptly stutters out a curse and turns tail. Drake waves him off. Now that the BBC was exposed for all to see, holding back was no longer necessary. So you can imagine things went pretty smoothly from then on. I kept getting those anonymous messages from S, telling me which way to go to avoid the next batch of henchmen. But why would I avoid them eager to test out my creation? I intentionally went against their directions. Only to find myself walking through empty alley after empty alley. And sure enough, when I started listening to them again, I ran into another pack of bad guys. The directions were wrong. Every single time. Well played. S but you have sorely underestimated my girth. And don't worry. I'm not a complete retard. I knew exactly what that S stood for. So. Drake fought his way to the docks where the rusting fuck bucket lay waiting and headed off world. But not before tossing his PDA into the nearest river. Hawk narrated that the encounters seemed to become less frequent after that. Until they stopped altogether. With that. Drake was free from the baggage of his past and ready to begin his new adventure. In the session's epilogue, Hawk gave me an opportunity to decide how Drake was going to approach things from now on, and as difficult as it was to let go, I knew I couldn't be Captain Drake, space pirate anymore. A captain without a ship, a pirate without a crew, just doesn't sound right. So Drake chose a new name, and a new identity. Zack. Zack would be a down on his luck merc for hire. Just like Faye and Archer and all the others used to be before they united under the black flag. It was gonna be a long road from the bottom back to the top. Might as well look the part. And I guess I'll call it there. Thanks for listening. I fucking love Drake's adventures. I'm gonna need to go on a serious deep dive and see if he wrote any more. Although I honestly don't think he did, you know. Um, I think that's the end of Drake. For the meantime, at least, um, maybe, maybe something might pop up with any luck. It would be, it'd be really nice. I would love this to keep going, you know. I'm really enjoying this story. But, like, as always, let us know what you thought down below. And remember to subscribe and all that other good shit. And I'll see you in the next video.